Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. This is a short clip from an interview for the former Prime Minister of Israel, Naftali Bennett. You see here he's from June of 21 till June of 22. And there's a picture of the former Prime Minister with his wife and family. Now, it's interesting. Like most of the leftists in the West, United States and Western Europe, especially Australia, they're very, very pro Palestine, also indirectly pro Hamas and anti Israel. I don't know why that is. I really don't. And you're seeing protests all over the world, in the United States. High school in San Francisco were chanting Palestine from the, from the river to the sea, which is a way of saying eliminating Jews. It's, it's, it's scary as hell. And I don't even think these people know what they're protesting. But anyway, I'm going to long story short. Uh, we're going to see a short clip. And it's interesting how he, he punches back, and good for him, and I'll comment along the way. And with all due respect, I think the Geneva Conventions, first and foremost, tell a country, you need to defend yourself, and we will defend ourselves. We're going out of our way. I know that uh, last week a hospital was uh, uh, fired by Islamic Jihad that, that fired a rocket on it, and BBC said that it was Israel. But it was in Israel, and I understand that BBC has taken a side of uh, uh, on the Gazan side because all your questions are only about the Gazan civilians. That's not you true. You haven't asked one that's question. That's not you haven't true. asked one question I, I began about by those children that, from the very beginning of this interview. From you the very just are asking me about them, Mr. But Bennett. It seems that, that is you not care true. Little about our side. Oh, it is, Mr. What Bennett. I began. Did you ask I began. Our side? I began by talking about the hostages and what I must. No, that's not what he's talking about. He'll explain it. And she knows damn well that's what it is. They don't want to talk about the fact that hundreds and th over a thousand now Israelis were butchered. You're going to get casualties of war when you bomb a place or bomb a, bomb a city. There's going to be civilian casualties, unfortunately. That's the horrors of war. But Hamas went across the border and killed unarmed Israeli citizens butchered them, men, women, and children, and babies. So I messaged the hostages. She knows exactly what's going on, and good for him to push back. Let's listen. Talking you about now is no, I'm not talking about the hostages. I'm talking about the babies that were murdered, and you keep on caring only about one side. But that is the BBC way. But let me let me tell you something. We're here protecting you. You're, we don't need your protection. And if you think there's a, a balance here between two equal sides, then you are lacking moral clarity. And BB I love that expression. You are lacking moral clarity. And nothing could be more truthful statement than that. It's amazing to me. Uh, let's listen on. And I'm sure by this point, the producers of the show, for this particular show, BBC, are saying things in her ear. They always carry a little hearing piece where the producers suggest what not to do and what to do and what to carry on. And you're going to see at the very end, it's very interesting. You see, I must say, is lacking moral clarity. What you guys did last week, shame on you. Before we spoke to you, Mr. Bennett, I spoke to a, a veteran Palestinian politician and I asked her about the massacre of Israeli citizens in southern Israel. I now, you notice two things. One, she didn't mention who this so-called Palestinian politician was. And number two, she didn't mention about what the response was from the Palestinian proposition. And number three, she talked about dead Israeli citizens, didn't mention children or babies in that little clip. So what is that, the lie of omission? They're not slanted. They're just as slanted here in the United States, unfortunately. But let's continue listening. I want to ask you now about the long-term strategy. What, who runs, let's say the Israeli military manages to wipe out Hamas. Who runs Gaza the day after? Well, I assume uh, they'll develop a uh, civilian leadership uh, based on the localities and on the Gazans themselves, but it won't be Hamas. Right. Do you, what about what Joe Biden said last week, which is, of course, Israel has the right to defend itself, but do not make the mistakes that the U.S., the U.K. made after 
Anybody that listens to Joe Biden, especially in a Middle Eastern conflict or anywhere for that matter, is totally off their rocker. Hate Trump, love Trump, somewhere in the middle. At least they were afraid of him. And the Middle East was a much safer place when Trump was president. And anybody that hates Trump, you can't deny that. You certainly can't. Maybe because they thought he was crazy. Okay, I'll take that. They thought he was crazy and they didn't know what he would do next. So they didn't dare do anything. I can make a very good case for the fact that this not, would not have happened if Trump was president. What do you think he means by that? Well, I don't know. You need to ask him. What I know is that our big mistake is that for uh, 20 years, we have again and again uh, listened to the world. We've always uh, contained this. We never went out to eradicate Hamas. That was the biggest mistake we made. And that's this the rest of the world's of, yeah. was that the rest of the world's fault then, rather than No, it's our own. fault. It's it's our fault. It's only Israel's fault. Though No. I give a lot of respect to the guy. Now he is uh, conservative, some people say far right in Israeli politics. But it is Israel's fault. The problem is the BBC, the mainstream media in the United States, the internet in general for the major news organizations are progressive ultra left. There's nobody that can deny that. It's so incredibly obvious. They call themselves fair and balanced, but it's, it's a joke. He's not blaming anybody else, but the pressure from all the progressives inside Israel as well. Remember, according to Ben Shapiro, who's an Orthodox Jew, there are two kinds of Jews as far as the religion goes. There's the Religious Jews, like himself, and then there's the non-religious Jews that just have Jewish uh, blood or heritage. The non-religious Jews are usually very left. And he's saying, it isn't the rest of the world I blame. It's the progressives here in Israel. Now, one thing that's happened, I'm sure Hamas didn't, didn't want this to happen, is I'll say the middle of the road politically, the Jews in Israel or Israeli citizens, period, that were left, or maybe center left, are now been converted over in huge numbers. We're talking 70, 80 plus percent now are on the right conservative side of this issue. They've managed to unite the Israeli people like never before. And I'm sure that was not Hamas's uh, intention, but let's continue on. The world, uh back then and now is, is basically telling us, cool down, let's go for a ceasefire. So my, our big mistake is that we listen to the world. Uh, I, I'm not blaming the world. The world has always been hypocritic uh, about the Jewish state. I'm blaming us for listening to them. because Yeah, they gave all of the West Bank to the Palestinians, I believe it was in 2005. Just gave it to them, no conditions. In 2006, Hamas was elected. They've been elected since 2006 all the way through today, 17 years. By huge percentages, the Palestinian people picked Hamas as their government and their organization. They have nobody to blame but themselves. I'm not saying they deserve what's happening to them, but actions have consequences, sometimes good, sometimes bad. At the end of the day, we have to protect ourselves. And, you know, I assume you wouldn't want uh, ISIS to live in your neighborhood and you would demand that your government eradicate ISIS. That's what our people want to, and we're going to do that. At some point, will Israeli politicians have to sit down with Palestinian politicians to talk about the long term? Now, look at the smug look on her face. Like, I can't stand this SOB. But we have to look like we're at least making an attempt to be fair and balanced. So we'll put our right wing nut, uh, super ultra conservative Israeli on here just to show that we're even handed. She's disgusted just by his presence. And you can read body language. You can read facial expressions. And I'm sure she's getting in her ear from the producers. Push him hard. Push him hard. Push him hard. Look. Uh, when uh, I'm fine with any talks always, but uh, the truth is, unfortunately, that uh, Hamas enjoys massive public Palestinian support. That's the sad truth that 
we sort of like to. Well, we don't know that. that. We actually last, don't know that. The, oh, the, the, oh, oh, we actually do. The, the last you know elections. Let, let me give you. The last elections were in 2006. Yeah, and, and you know that uh, Hamas got a full majority, an overwhelming majority of the electorate. It was a decade and, and a half then, ago. Uh, I'm uh, fine. Uh, I, I, go, go and do elections. I can tell you that right Ah, apologies. I do apologize. Uh, I'm not sure why the signal cut out at the end. Yeah, isn't that interesting? The signal cut out when he said the Palestinian people by a huge majority support Hamas. Isn't that interesting? And all of a sudden, their signal was lost. This has happened a lot in CNN, MSNBC, uh, all the networks here in the United States as well as the world. What a convenient time. Finally, the producers who were probably freaking out in your earpiece said, that's it. Let's just cut them off. He's telling too much truth here. We can't have that because it's not it's not again. It's against what we say is happening. And there you have it. There's just one little piece of what's going on in the media concerning Israel and Hamas. I don't say Israel and Palestine on purpose, but this is. And I give the former Prime Minister Bennett kudos. Stood right up to her. Oh, I talked to a Palestinian politician and about, no, she didn't talk about the killing of children and babies, though, did she? The killing of Israeli civilians. A lie of omission. And believe me, if it was the other way around. If the Israelis attacked Gaza and killed children and infants, that's all they would talk about every single question 24-7. But when Hamas does it, it's just Israeli citizens, and they try to change the subject as quickly as they can. Those are the telltale signs. The real racists, the real ideologues that believe in racism and anti-Semitism, are coming out of the woodwork now. They're being exposed. For we all knew what was true. But now they can't hide it anymore. And I don't even think they're realizing it, but they're shooting themselves in the foot at every given opportunity. There's a huge split in the Democrat Party here in the United States between the pro-Hamas Palestine people and against Israel and the other half of the Democrats are for Israel in the butchering and the slaughtering of Israeli citizens, women, and infants. It's, um, it's amazing. But it was going to be exposed eventually. It was going to be exposed, and now they're trying to backtrack, and all kinds of crazy stuff is going on. College students in Harvard now are being doxxed to corporations, and corporations won't hire them, and they're screaming, holy hell, it's not really fair. We protested against Israel for Palestine, and now we can't find a job when we get out of Harvard. Well, they've been doing it to conservative people since the invention of the Internet, and especially the last five or six years. Anybody disagrees with them, they're, they're banned from having a job or, or making a living, and it's disgusting. It happened to me politically here in upstate New York when I had a convenience store. I sold it two years ago. It's just the way it is with these people, and now... The tide is turning, and they don't like it. Kudos to former Prime Minister Bennett and negative for BBC, who exposes themselves as the progressive numbskulls that they really and truly are. What do you think? Until the next time, God bless, goodbye, and good luck. Mm -hmm.